Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thursday, the 15th of April, 2021, in the second week of Easter. Our Daily Prayer Lord Jesus Christ, let your Holy Spirit fill me and transform my heart and mind that I may choose life, the abundant life you offer to those who trust in you. Give me courage to always choose what is good, true, and just, and to reject whatever is false, foolish, and contrary to your holy will. Amen. Magnificat Daily Scripture But first, an overview. The one whom God sent speaks the words of God and does not ration his gift of the Spirit. Peter and the apostles confirm they have been sent. We must obey God rather than men. Meanwhile, the one who is of the earth speaks of earthly things. If eternal life is truly in us, then we, like the psalmists, will be unable to contain ourselves. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. In our reading, we are witnesses of these words, as is the Holy Spirit. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles Chapter 5, verse 27 When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them, We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 34 The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia. Our Gospel tells us the Father loves the Son and has given everything over to Him. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 3 verse 31. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. 
the Father loves the Son and has given everything over to Him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magnificat Meditation of the Day is entitled The One from Above And you see a serene man coming forth from this radiant dawn who pours out his brightness into the darkness and it drives him back with great force so that he pours out the redness of blood and the whiteness of pallor into it and strikes the darkness such a strong blow that the person who is lying in it is touched by him, taking on a shining appearance and walks out of it upright. This is the word of God, imperishably incarnate in the unity of unstained virginity and born without pain, and yet not separated from the Father. How? While the Son of God was being born in the world from a mother, he was still in heaven in the Father. And at this the angels suddenly trembled and sang the sweetest praises of rejoicing. And living in the world without stain of sin, he sent out into the darkness of unbelief his clear and blessed teachings and salvation. But Rejected by the unbelieving people and led to his passion, he poured out his beautiful blood and knew in his body the darkness of death. And thus, conquering the devil, he delivered from hell his elect, who were held prostrate there, and by his redeeming touch brought them back to the inheritance they had lost in Adam. As they were returning to their inheritance, timbrels and harps and all kinds of music burst forth, because man, who had lain in perdition but now stood upright in blessedness, had been freed by heavenly power and escaped from death. This was written by St. Hildegard of Bingen, who died in 1179 and was a German Benedictine nun, physician, composer, and mystic. Laudate, Daily Bible Verse Entitled, Obedience is Better Than Sacrifice Quote, But Peter and John, the apostles, said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. Acts 5.29 We must obey God rather than men. A great Christian principle is laid down by the Apostle Peter. This Christian principle will lead many Christians to martyrdom, including Peter and all the Apostles. What is obedience? Obedience comes from the Latin word Obedir, which can be translated as listening to the one speaking to you. We understand this when God complains through his prophets that his people do not listen to his voice. They refuse to listen to him. A child who does not listen to his parent will never obey them. The child does not want the parents to stop his planned course of behavior. Those who did not listen to God and disobeyed him include Adam and Eve, Saul, the first king of Israel, King Ahaz, and a line of rebellious kings after him. God says that disobedience is a criminal offense. Quote, Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. Unquote. 1 Samuel 15, 3 
God rejected Saul, the first king of Israel, because of his disobedience. Quote, so because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Unquote. Those who obey God, we must mention first our leader and captain, Jesus Christ. He obeyed the Father unto death and set us an example as a faithful and true witness martyr. Obedience often results in severe persecution. Examples John the Baptist, the Apostles, Pope St. Martin I, St. Thomas More, etc. The Roman Martyrology is the record of known martyrs. In its unupdated form, it is bursting with the names of women and men who gave their lives for Jesus. Most of them would not have been condemned if they had chosen to disobey Jesus and obey the worldly powers. How can you prepare yourself to obey God? Remember the meaning of obedience. Start with a willingness to listen to God. Commit yourself to listening to God in the Holy Scriptures every day. Through this exercise, the Holy Spirit will transform your mind. A transformed mind is able to discern the will of God in everything. Romans 12.2 Pray daily for grace to hear God and obey Him. Ask God daily for the gift of His awesome Spirit. We hear from Jesus in today's Gospel that the Father does not ration His Spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit in direct proportion to your desire and preparation for the gift. Laudate, Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Scriptural Readings Introductory Prayer I come before you, Lord, poor and unworthy, yet you welcome me with such love. With my effort during this meditation, I want to make a small return on your great kindness. Petition for the next three challenges. Help me to cooperate with your greatest gift, the Holy Spirit. Our first challenge no rationing. Jesus does not ration the gift of the Spirit. By and through the Holy Spirit, Christ lifts our whole life to another plane. The Lord's generosity is amazing. Think of the Eucharist. Every time we receive the Lord, He leaves in our soul a renewal and deepening of the Holy Spirit's presence. With every communion, we are preparing our bodies and souls for the immortality of the resurrection. Of course, such a gift invites a response. In the face of such generosity, how can we be stingy in return? Our second challenge, a gift of unity. The gift of the Spirit is vital for our human relationships. Jesus' ardent prayer at the Last Supper was for the unity of His disciples. Quote, That they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. Unquote. John 17.21 For a unity like that, the Holy Spirit is is absolutely indispensable. The gift of the Spirit, in order to be effective, provides the antidote for all our tendencies to disunity. The Spirit combats our pride and egotism by reminding us of Christ's humility. He stirs up the realization that we have to live in charity and provides us with the strength to give without counting the costs. He enables us to persevere in unity. 
Our third challenge, a personal gift. The depths of our hearts is where we ultimately experience this gift of the Spirit. But at times, we feel more like a dry well than a spring of water welling up to eternal life. John 4:14. 4, the Holy Spirit is at work, in abundance, no less in the moments of dryness than in the moments of consolation. He seeks to purify us of the petty attachments that hold us back. He directs us to seek God for His own sake and not to turn to Him only as a divine dispenser of spiritual candy. But still, we should await the moment of consolation with the hope-filled knowledge that the Lord is near. When we experience this consolation, we will experience confirmation that the Lord's gift of the Spirit is unlike any other. Our Conversation with Christ Lord, the Holy Spirit is the soul of the Church. He is the gift you have given us with such generosity. Help us to live more in accord with this truth. Help us to be obedient when we are tempted to pride. Help us to love when we are tempted to reject. May your Holy Spirit constantly reinforce the bond that holds us together. Our Resolution I will foster charity by paying special attention to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. Meditation Do you hunger for the true and abundant life which God offers through the gift of His Holy Spirit? The Jews understood that God gave a certain portion of His Spirit to His prophets. When Elijah was about to depart for heaven, his servant Elisha asked for a double portion of the Spirit which Elijah had received from God. 2 Kings 2.9 The Holy Spirit opens our minds to understand God's word of truth. Jesus tells his disciples that they can believe the words he speaks because God the Father has anointed him by pouring out his Spirit on him in full measure, without keeping anything back. The function of the Holy Spirit is to reveal God's truth to us. Jesus declared that when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. John 16, 13 When we receive the Holy Spirit, He opens our hearts and minds to recognize and understand God's word of truth. St. Augustine of Hippo, who lived from 354 to 430 A.D., said, I believe in order to understand, and I understand the better to believe. Faith opens our minds and hearts to receive God's word of truth and obey it willingly. Do you believe God's word and receive it as if your life depended on it? God gives us the freedom to accept or reject what He says is true. But with that freedom also comes a responsibility to recognize the consequences of the choice we make, either to believe what He has spoken to us through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, or to ignore, reject, and choose our own way apart from God. Our choices will either lead us on the path of abundant life and union with God, or the path that leads to spiritual death and separation from God. Love the Lord, cling to Him, and you will have life. God issued a choice as a challenge to the people of the Old Covenant. Quote, See, I have set before you this day life and good, death and evil. I call 
heaven and earth to witness against you this day, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life, that you may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and cleaving to him. Unquote. Deuteronomy 30, 15 And God issued the same challenge to the people of the New Covenant today. Do you weigh the consequences of your choices? Do the choices you make lead you towards life or death, blessing or cursing? If you choose to obey God's voice and to do His will, then you will know and experience that abundant life which comes from God Himself. If you choose to follow your own way apart from God and His will, then you choose for death, a spiritual death which poisons and kills the heart and soul until there is nothing left but an empty person devoid of love, truth, goodness, purity, peace, and joy. Do your choices lead you towards God or away from God? Lord Jesus Christ, let your Holy Spirit fill me and transform my heart and mind that I may choose life, the abundant life you offer to those who trust in you. Give me courage to always choose what is good, true, and just, and to reject whatever is false, foolish, and contrary to your holy will. Amen. Further reflection entitled, Making Waves? Quote, Better for us to obey God than men. Unquote. Acts 5.29 The Holy Spirit is given to those that obey God. Acts 5.32 Additional movement of the Spirit are given to those who obey God in greater ways. The experience of Jesus' disciples illustrates this principle. They obeyed Him by devoting themselves to constant prayer for nine days, Acts 1.14. Then they received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Before they received a spirit a second time, Acts 4.31, they obeyed the Lord to a much greater degree. Quote, They devoted themselves to the apostles' instruction in the communal life, to the breaking of bread, and the prayers. Unquote. Acts 2.42 And, quote, Those who believed shared all things in common. They would sell their property and goods, dividing everything on the basis of each one's needs. Unquote. Acts 2.44 Before a third wave of the Spirit came, they obeyed to the point of being arrested, having been judged worthy of ill treatment for the sake of the name. Acts 5.41 Before the next wave of the Spirit, Saint Stephen obeyed to the point of giving up his life for Jesus and becoming the first martyr. The Holy Spirit is not rationed, John 3.34, but given lavishly, Timothy 3, 6. The waves keep on coming to those who keep on obeying in ever greater ways. Do you want a new wave of the Spirit? In what way will you obey the Lord as never before? The Holy Spirit continues to be given to those who obey God more. Our prayer. Father, I will obey you even to death, and therefore be exalted. Philippians 2.8 Come, Holy Spirit, with wave after wave of your gifts and graces. God's promise to us. We testify to this. So too does the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those that obey him. Acts 5.32 Thomas A. Kempis quote from the Imitation of Christ 
To glory in tribulation is not hard to him that loves, for so to glory is to glory in the cross of the Lord. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.